Um, but thank you for being here. This is our final primary forum um, until we'll see if some of the elections might go into runoffs. But for now, this is our final forum. So thank you for attending previous forums, and we're looking forward to this one this evening. Um, these forums have been coordinated and hosted by our Chamber Advocacy Committee, which is tasked with continually advocating for our members and acting as the voice of business for our community. All candidates that qualified for a local office or state legislative office qualified as Republicans, so the upcoming election on May 24th will decide our county and district leadership for the immediate future. And as leaders of our business and local community, I urge you to reflect on the impact that business has as you go to the polls. And early voting has begun, so you may have already voted, but I hope if you're here, maybe you haven't quite yet. Um, again, you can. we have some different sheets on the back side of uh, your forum event information tonight. It talks about early voting. We hope you will spread that information around the community. For those of you that don't know why there might be such a big push to vote, although we always hope that our citizens vote, this year there's been a big change in that our presidential preference primary was not around the same time as our local primary. So we just want to make sure that we have that same high voter turnout. Um, in our local primary, because we all know that those candidates impact our lives the most. This evening, we're going to hear from candidates and currently elected officials for State House District 7 and State Senate District 51. Dawson County is also included in State House District 9. Representative Tanner does not have opposition, so he will not be participating tonight, but we encourage you to join us on May 19th at 11.30 a.m. for our monthly chamber luncheon at the Professional Development Center Representative Tanner will be speaking to us and giving a post-session wrap-up, so you definitely won't want to miss that. And before we get started, we just want to thank Dawson County Middle School for letting us use their facility this evening. Please note that the Chamber does not endorse a particular party or particular candidates. We work diligently to ensure that tonight's forums are fair to the participants and informative to our members and audience. Questions were predetermined by the committee and were taken from questions that were submitted by Chamber members. If you're unable to stay for the entire forum or would like to share this forum with a colleague, the video will be posted to our Chamber's YouTube and Facebook pages. Um, and we've had quite the great success with those. So do go check out any of the forums that we've done um, this year are up there on our YouTube page. You can watch them and share them. I know that we have a good number of candidates and elected officials here as well. So we thank you for being here and you can also share that information on your pages. For this forum, each candidate will have three minutes to introduce themselves, two minutes to respond to each question, and two minutes for a closing statement. Candidates have not seen the questions. Our candidates are seated in alphabetical order by last name, and opening statements will be given in alphabetical order. Each following question will be answered by the next candidate. Our timekeeper is Melissa Mayton. She'll be holding up, she and Michael Moore. Michael will be holding up signs to let you know when you have one minute left, 30 seconds left, and when your time has run out. We're going to begin with opening statements. If Speaker Ralston will begin, three minutes. Thank you very much, Christy, and thanks to the Chamber for having us over here tonight. And thank all of you who have uh, made arrangements to have prime seating and get here early and uh, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this and, and be informed by being here. Uh, I'm delighted to be here tonight. I have had the great uh, honor of representing uh, part of this county at least in the Georgia House of Representatives since 2003 uh, and um, I've enjoyed uh, the many friendships that I have made and still have here and enjoy the opportunity of working with uh, your local leaders, your business leaders, teachers, uh, uh, church leaders, uh, and coming into the schools, speaking to the retired teacher group that I usually speak to uh, every year. Uh, it's a great honor to get to visit over here, not just in, a, in an election year, but uh, in each year, uh, many times. Uh, and um, so I just want to tell you that representing Dawson County for me is a real, um, uh, it's a real privilege. Um, I'm here tonight because uh, I'm asking for, humbly asking for your vote uh, for re-election to District 7 of the Georgia House this, uh, in the Republican primary coming up on May the 24th. Uh, I have a record that I think uh, 
that I'm very proud of. Uh, we're not perfect, but uh, we've managed to do some things, I think, that have moved Georgia forward over the past few years. I know that we hear a lot of people talk about uh, people being angry and frustrated with what's going on in Washington. Well, I'm angry and frustrated with what's going on in Washington. But uh, in state government here, we've been able uh, to learn from some tough times and, and, and move forward in a very conservative and responsible way by balancing your budget every year, by reducing the number of state employees over the past uh, five years by approximately 13,000, downsizing government, uh, in, enacting tax reform uh, and, and regulatory reform, which has stimulated a business climate here in Georgia that has allowed Georgia to grow 515,000 new jobs over the past five years. Uh, and even in this area, by cutting the unemployment rate uh, by almost exactly one half since 2011 in Gilmer and Fannin County that I represent, and by over one half here in Dawson County. And I look forward to continuing some of those initiatives, focusing on job creation, economic development, the best of educational opportunities for our children, uh, we're working on solutions to our rural health care problems. So I look forward to talking to you tonight, and thank you very much. Thank you. Here from Mr. Sam Snyder. Thank you very much. My name is Sam Snyder, and I am a former teacher at Gilmer High School for 25 of my 30 years. And I have retired from that in October, and I still get the joy of coaching. And uh, getting to coach against Dawson County over the years has been good. Uh, Aaron Haynes and I are close friends. And we've been able to win 17 state championships during my tenure. Now, why do I mention that in a political race? You have to be able to pull people together for a common purpose. You have to accept other people's ideas and thoughts. You have to take other people's opinions. And I happen to have the joy of having two coaches that's worked for me that were named Southeastern United States Assistant Coach of the Year. I allowed those men to speak to me frankly, to tell me exactly how I could improve my wrestling program. And I think those same skills for that, also being 20 years uh, in our school system on our, our leadership team, also being able to create and build the first track for Gilmer High School in 1993 through the whole community coming together. There's been a lot of ways I've pulled people together. I think in the House of Representatives, I can also work for a common goal of improving our state. My wife, Carla, 30 years, couldn't be here tonight. She has a couple of nieces she's helping to take care of and a couple of uh, sick grandbabies. But in this race, I guess my concerns are career establishment politicians. If our state budget in 2010 was $18.3 billion, announced over $24 billion, and we've cut so many jobs, what happened that we had to spend so much money? It's a fair question. Those jobs in the DOT were sent to private business, but we still spend more money through DOT. The transportation tax that we had in 2015 took the DOT budget from $2 billion to $3 billion. That's a billion dollar increase. It changed it to a excise tax. I agree with the consumption tax, but we already had a consumption tax. The second one that worries me besides the transportation would have to be RIFRA. There's a lot of things coming out of Washington. You've probably read the news or heard the news in North Carolina and even as far as Blue Ridge, Georgia, concerning social issues. Religious Freedom Restoration Act was introduced and passed in the Senate, 2004, 15, and 16, not taken for a vote in the House. It was introduced also by Mr. Teasley in the House, not voted on. Why? Why a pastor protection bill to protect me as a pastor when I don't need protecting? Why not religious freedom protection for all citizens of all faiths? I believe we've got some things that are wrong in the state house, and I'm here to ask for your vote. And if somebody reminded me today, I'm here to ask for your prayers. Because being in a campaign is risky business. Thank you very much. Let's start with our first question, and Mr. Snyder will be the first to respond. Increased building of homes and the boom of the retail sector located along Highway 400 are clear indicators that Dawson County and North Georgia are growing and continuing to be a popular destination for Georgians of all ages in all stages of life. 
how do you believe we can improve infrastructure and the road systems that are so vital to supporting this growth in our local economy? Please provide examples of legislation you have supported or would support to achieve this or ideas for funding sources. Correct. This is a, this is a good question, but obviously for someone who's never ran before, there's no legislation that I would have introduced. But with the $2 billion DOT budget that we had prior to 2015, those funds should be distributed equally to the districts. I have some literature out there if you want to get any of it that shows what the next 18 months shows. And if you look for your county, you'll find how many projects are in Dawson or Pickens or Gilmer or Fannin up here in the North Georgia area. You can determine if it's being distributed equally. Or is it bully politics? Where Josh McCoons found out that after the session, $10 million was taken out of his district for his opposition to Mr. Ralston and to Mr. Deal. And just this past week, another $100,000 was taken out of Josh McCoons' district because Josh McCoons doesn't agree with leadership sometimes. So I think it ought to be fairly given and allow the local area, your local commissioners, your local business leaders to determine how best to meet those needs. Right now, a certain list is given to the state, and then they send back what they'll cover, what they won't. Why not let the local governments determine what's the highest priorities for the tax dollars that are spent on roads and infrastructure? I think it took less than the two minutes needed. Thank you. Uh, uh, updated our funding model in more than 40 years. We were being held hostage by the federal government in terms of them not being able to pass a uh, highway bill. Uh, and so uh, I and others believe that it was time that Georgia took its own future in its hands, and we did that. And so we do have infrastructure uh, on the way now uh, 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 that's being uh, uh, road and bridge repairs and renovation uh, and enhancement projects in all three of the counties of this house district. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure what he is talking about by bully politics, but let me just say, I'm not here tonight to defend a state senator from Columbus. I'll let him do that. I'm going to take care of the people in this House District, the young people in our schools, our seniors in nursing homes, uh, and, and people that, whose future is here. I assume he's a grown man, this senator he's talking about, so I, I will let him take care of him, but I'm here to take care of the people of the 7th House District. Thank you. We recognize that legislators worked on many issues during this past session that elicited intense passion from both proponents and opponents, such as religious freedom, campus carry, and medical marijuana. As citizens of Dawson County, what assurances can you provide us that our voices have been heard and will be heard on issues such as these in the future? Well, thank you for that question. I was very disappointed um, by the governor's veto of campus carry. Uh, that bill was thoroughly vetted and debated in the uh, committee process in the House. It, went over, it was passed overwhelmingly. It went to the Senate, same process, overwhelmingly passed. Uh, we addressed every concern that was brought to us before final passage by the Senate. I don't think you ought to give up your constitutional rights when you set foot on a college campus if you're otherwise entitled to own or possess a firearm. We will be back next session with a uh, Second Amendment bill, just as we did two years ago when we passed the bill that the NRA said was the strongest Second Amendment bill that any state had ever passed. So we'll be back next session with that bill and it will be as strong or it may be even stronger than the one we passed last year. I don't want to weaken any Second Amendment protections and will not support that. We passed medical marijuana out last year. Um, uh, that one got a little off track uh, 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 this year, uh, which I was disappointed in. I hope we can get it back on track next session. There are a lot of families in Georgia that are eagerly anticipating that. Now on the RIFRA thing, we passed a bill this year that I felt like was fair and reasonable and hit the sweet spot that everybody could agree on. 
you know, I get accused sometimes of killing that bill for two years. Number one, Representative Teasley, he mentioned, didn't introduce his bill in 2014 until two weeks before the end of the session. That's a little late to pass a bill. And in 2015, the bill was tabled by the people who were proponents of the bill in committee. So there, neither I nor any one other single person stopped that bill. Uh, we passed that bill this year, and I expect that we'll have a bill next Thank year, you. too. Thank you. I think the first one would be the medical marijuana bill, and, and my wife, being a physical therapist, deals with a lot of different patients from either older age or younger. And I also feel the pain of parents who don't have access to that oil. That's a wonderful help for those that are going through seizures. Kids going through hundreds of seizures a day. That's definitely a bill we need to look at for that purpose. Now to expand that bill for other reasons, it's open for discussion. And I would suggest that I need to listen to this community and the other two communities that I would represent concerning any further use of medical marijuana. We have a major drug problem in our country, and the oil of cannabis is not the problem. It's the abuse of illegal drugs that's the problem. So we've got to separate that and make sure we deal with it individually. As far as the campus carry, it's disappointing. I, too, support Second Amendment rights. And contrary to the ads going out about me on different websites and TV and, and Pandora, I am definitely for teenagers going hunting. I got my ability to hunt at 12 years old, and my sons have both hunted, and we've got plenty of pictures of them with squirrels and deer. And the RIFRA is close to my heart. I'm not gonna go through the whole lineage of things that you can read, but if you'll look up Columbus Ledger, and yes, if you'll mention Josh McCoons in your search, you'll see what really happened with RIFRA. Look, the politics of Washington are not just in Washington. They're here in Georgia. And if you look where the money is, if you'll do an ethics search on where the money is, you will find why the votes go the way the votes go. We can get 161 out of 180 votes for pasture protection, but only 104 for the watered down RIFRA bill. We didn't work too hard for that RIFRA, in my personal opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Our third question will go first, Mr. Steiner. The Tax Foundation recently ranked Georgia 39th in their state business tax climate index. This index is designed to rank how well states structure their tax systems and reflects the following variables, corporate tax, individual income tax, sales tax, unemployment insurance tax, and property tax. Recognizing that there are many tax and economic ranking systems, are there specific areas within the state government that you feel could be reduced or modified in order to ease unnecessary regulations, restrictions, and financial burdens upon Georgia's businesses? Yes, there are a whole list of taxes that we could go back over the past six years and reconsider. But let me address this in two ways. First of all, the fair tax folks, there's several of them out there who have a good proponent for fair tax. They tell me that five point, not just goods, but also services, we would be financially neutral in the money we bring into the state. And that would then eliminate the income tax. The, the motivation to work would not be limited by an income tax. It would be improved. So therefore, I would, I would want to have a fair tax and look at that as actual tax reform. The Senate gave their two people towards the committee that was agreed to in 2014. We don't have one yet from the House. We'd like to have the House join in on that discussion concerning tax reform. And then as far as property taxes, like anybody else, I hate paying rent on my property, but we have to find a way to continue to cut certain things. And if I was looking at the House of Representatives, the State Senate, the whole Capitol, I would begin with some of the things that I might consider to be fluff. For example, it was brought up that we gave, in previous forms, a raise to Georgia State Patrolmen. I think they were ranked 50 and now they're ranked 49th across the nation. And yet the head of the Georgia State Patrol is in the top three of the nation. Are we overpaying at the top while the men on the field are not quite being rewarded for their hard work? So I would look at some of the added things we have that we don't necessarily need to run government. And that's what you've heard throughout the presidential campaign. $19 trillion in debt, really? Surely there's something we can cut. And the state has to balance their budget. They have to do that. But it keeps going up. At some point, why don't we stop it going up, cut out some fluff, 
and solve the problem. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Mr. Austin. Well, let's, let's put this business of state spending in perspective. You know what else has gone up? is population. Uh, with that budget that we're talking about, we're now serving um, a million more Georgians than we did back in 2011. Uh, so if you look on a per capita basis, per person, we are now spending the same thing in fiscal year 17, which begins in July, that we were spending in fiscal year 2007, 10 years ago. So we're serving more people with less. Uh, I think that's significant. Uh, and tax reform is something that we're looking at every session. But uh, tax reform is, is uh, you know, you, you can't just put it on a bumper sticker. It's a little bit more complicated than that. We're going to have to ask ourselves some tough questions. Do you want to put the sales tax back on groceries? Um, that took seven seconds, by the way. Uh, do you want to put the sales tax back on groceries? Uh, what services do you want to tax? Do you want to take away exemptions to uh, some of the charities here in Georgia? So these are hard questions that you can't answer with a bumper sticker. Uh, and we're looking at them and we'll continue to look at them. Uh, but you have to sort of understand this process. I want to go back one second, if I can, to the, the this issue of gun. You know, my opponent mentioned something about a website that has an inaccurate information. It basically says he's supporting a specific gun bill. Uh, I take him at his word. If he thinks that teenagers ought to be able to hunt with a long arm, then I, I, I will accept that. But that means he either didn't read the bill before he embraced it, or he didn't understand it after he read it. And that doesn't give me any comfort on the Second Amendment. Yeah, move on to our fourth question, which Speaker Ralston will be the first to respond to. So our final question before we move into closing statements. Uh, Dawson County is home to the longest operating corn maze in the state, Uncle Shucks, one of the top fall agritourism destinations, Bird's Pumpkin Farm, the tallest cascading waterfall east of the Mississippi, Amicalola Falls, and the North Georgia Premium Outlets. Georgia's seventh district is home to many other agritourism and tourism destinations, such as apple barns, wineries, and historic downtowns. How do you propose to promote and foster the sustainability and growth of tourism, in particular agritourism, throughout the state of Georgia, given that it has such a great impact within Dawson, Gilmer, and Fannin County? Thank you for that question, because that is a question that, that gets me excited. I, when I go around this district and I go to all those facilities, then I am excited about our future, and I see the jobs that we're creating. Um, and, and so the way we do that is we, we, we help our Department of Economic Development aggressively promote uh, our area, which they are doing now. You know, maybe if we get a new speaker that lives in Valdosta, maybe they'll promote Valdosta rather than Dawson, Fannin, and Gilmer County. Uh, because I think that seems not to be too big a deal to some people. But we, what we have to do is recognize that agriculture is changing. Uh, and and, and uh, what we've tried to do, for example, is make natural gas more accessible to poultry farmers, for example, in Gilmer County. Uh, one little thing we did this session was we shifted some money, didn't increase, but shifted to, uh, some money to give the wine industry here in Georgia a viticulturalist. I didn't know a year or two ago what a viticulturalist was, but that's a scientist that treats diseases in vineyards. We were having to go to Virginia or Pennsylvania or North Carolina and get on a list to wait on one of their people to come in to help our people, and that's a booming industry here. We've got a lot of industries like that. Uh, I have a record of supporting them and I will continue to support them because they're creating jobs and they're bringing people to our area who are spending money here in our area and that's win-win. Agritourism, I love the signs that we have on each area to help point people towards those. If 
I'm not mistaken, that's been a state issue that's been very helpful. The biggest thing we can do for agritourism and for all business is less intrusion, less regulation. Step out of the way. The state government did not produce these jobs. The state government's job is to keep an infrastructure and to keep the government going away from controlling private business. But we would want to do everything we could to encourage further development, but the government will not produce the jobs. It's the wonderful people in a country that believes in private industry. Now, at our school that I've been at, we have a great FFA program. And what I've been excited about is not just that these folks know how to grow plants that I go buy every year from the plant sale, but the leadership skills. At the board meeting about two weeks ago, they showed their Robert's Rule of Order. It was an amazing display of about 12 minutes of how they followed all the guidelines and then the next week went on and won the state championship in Robert's Rule of Order. They understand leadership, they understand how to handle pressure in a moment, and whether any of those kids or all those kids choose an, uh, a future in agriculture, they've learned a lot from the agriculture teachers at Gilmore High School, and that's the way it is in most schools. We have good ag departments, and so I truly hope that we can continue to support all that happens from Birds Park, uh, I'm sorry, from Birds Pumpkin Farm to all the apple orchards on the way from here to LJ. But I'm thankful that big business is not running that. I'm, I'm sorry, that government is not running that. I'm thankful that business owners are running that. Thank you. And then, we'll go into our closing statements. Each candidate has two minutes, and we'll begin with Mr. Steiner. Two minutes. We only had three minutes for the opening, and, and so two minutes to close. As you can tell, I hope you can tell, I'm not a politician. I'm not an experienced politician, and I'm thankful for that. It's time for citizens. It's time for representation by citizens. I never thought I could be attacked as much as I have, and just simple little things. I don't know every single item that will come up in the next year, but I can promise you I will give you an honest representation for your county and for the other two counties that are a part of this district. I can promise you that. I told my wife the other day, I said, I will not sacrifice our family or our marriage to win this election. And I will not sacrifice our family or our marriage to keep the job once I'm there. My character over the past 30 years in education should speak volumes for the type of person that I will be in the House of Representatives. In 2010, it was a good thing to remove the speaker. Mr. Ralston did a good thing taking over. He risked his political career for that. That speaker would not allow equal representation. That speaker ran that place like a dictator. And Mr. Ralston promised equal representation. I believe six years later, that's no longer true. You would have to research that on your own. But I have found in talking to many people in the House of Representatives and around the state that we don't have equal representation. We have a dictatorship. Just like in Washington, they're trying to control our lives. I truly believe we have to send up new people to change that system. Otherwise, our country and our state are in trouble. Thank you very much for your time, and I'm asking for your vote. Speaker Austin. Thank you again for being here, and uh, thank you for uh, hearing us out. And um, again, I ask for your vote, uh, either in early voting, which is going on now, or in the primary on May 24. Uh, it is an honor to represent you, and I treat it that way every day. Um, I was a little, I'm a little confused about this dictatorship and, and bully politics thing because first I'm blamed that I tell people what to do, and then I'm blamed because I don't tell them what to do and get enough votes uh, to pass certain bills. So I'm not sure what it is. Um, you know, and I, I don't know what all this talk is about a tax. Um, um, you know, when we take positions and make simple statements that we're for this bill or we're for that idea or we're against that, you know, we're held accountable for that. And if you can't take the heat, then the kitchen door is open. Um, you know, I went through two years ago when we went through this same little campaign, 
uh, uh, some attacks. I went through some attacks. One of his major contributors stood in, at a rally in LJ and called my dad, who had been dead for four years, a snake. And I had to call and reach out to my son, my daughter, and my nieces and nephews that night uh, who were very upset by that. He never disavowed that. I don't think he ever gave him his money back to completely sever that relationship. And he wants to talk about dirty politics. I want to talk about the future. If he wants to be concerned about representing somebody in Columbus, that's fine. I'm concerned about what's happening here, the future here, the future in Gilmer County, and the future in Fannin County. Those are the people I'm accountable to. God bless you and thank you. Thank you. Y'all join me in thanking our candidates.